so first of all thank you very much for liking my lectures and if you aren't following me on facebook then this is my facebook page you're most welcome to uh, you know follow me on this facebook as well so in the previous lecture we guys were developing this game okay so the name of this game is uh, sword fight game right and today we guys will be working on uh, we will try to make it more interactive and more interesting for the user to play okay so the first thing that we can do is uh, we can define a suitable a relevant background for this game so as to make it more uh, you know interactive or you can say more uh, visual is the appearance of this game we can enhance that by defining a very good background uh, for this so let's come in this anime on this animation workspace and here i am going to tap on this new animation tab and you know there is a category uh, named backgrounds which you will be able to find in this animation library let's come inside this category so these are some backgrounds you're going to come across now you can make use of one of these backgrounds over here uh so let's do one thing let's make use of this one this one is looking good okay and now what we have to do we just have to rename this uh, sprite to back or whatever you want to fine now uh, if you'll run this game you will not be able to see that background over here why because we haven't defined any code in this workspace with which we can access that background on this playground so what we can do we can copy these two lines of code okay and we can put a put them right on the top like this okay so now i'm going to change the name of the variable to back and in this variable i am going to save the background sprite let's convert it into block based coding first and from this drop down over here let's select the background so this is the one okay now when you'll run this game this is what you will get to see okay the background is visible to us but it is not properly uh, you know coming on this background so how can we make it fit okay to this background that's what we need to we have to uh, you know define the code for over here so what we can do we can you know change the coordinates to 200 comma 200 and this is going to give you the right output see now it is properly coming on this whole background okay so that's how you can uh, make it more interesting you can make the appearance uh, more appealing okay let's now come down you know when i am running this game and when these ghost images are hitting this player over here so they are getting destroyed now i want them to come back again but from some different position so how can we do that so you know uh, why they are getting destroyed just because of these codes which i have defined over here so if this swordman will touch the ghost one image ghost one will get destroyed and this is a sound which we'll be able to hear uh, from the background now if you want it to appear again on this background so what you can do you can come up and you know you can copy this whole code from here fine because this is the code which is actually uh, you know creating this ghost one sprite on this playground besides uh, you know we have defined this velocity x velocity y component also so as to impart uh, a velocity to this ghost one in both x and y direction so that is the reason we are able to see it moving diagonally so what we can do we can copy this whole thing from here and we can put it inside this if loop okay and remember one thing you don't have to copy this var again why because you know var is used for declaring a variable on a javascript platform so we are already done with declaring this ghost one variable so you don't have to declare it again and again and again and again fine so that is the reason what i have done i have copied the code from this point not from this point 
okay just keep this thing in your mind okay now if i will run this game let's see what are we going to get as an output okay so as you can see this goal is again and again appearing on the playground right but it is you know coming from the same point i want uh, you know once the ghost gets destroyed after touching this sword man a random location should get assigned to the new ghost from which it should appear to us coming in this ditch so how can we do that how can we assign the new ghost a random location so for doing that see what we can do this is the code which is actually creating the sprite or at this location okay so this sprite is this is sprite this ghost image is getting created over here so this is the coordinates of this point are 3 to 5 comma 24 so what we can do we can pass a random value for this x and y part of these two of this coordinate how can you pass a random value instead of passing a hardcore value so for that you need to come on this maths tab and here you'll be able to find this random number block so you just have to place it over here like this now i uh, the ghost can appear uh, you know from this point till this point along x axis if i if i consider x axis so it can appear uh, you know it can get created on this point also uh, so from this till this point fine so what is a x value at this point it is 90 approximately 90 right and what is the value of x over here so it is approximately 400 so what we can do let's define a random number between 92 and 500 okay then you can place a comma and after that we are going to do the same thing for the y part also of the coordinates so we can copy this whole thing and we can put it over here like this fine and uh, you know it i would like it to appear in between this point and this point so uh, the coordinates of this point are the y value of this point is uh, 21 and value of y at this point is 371 so let's make it uh, 30 and here I am defining 323 okay let's now see what is going to happen when you when we'll run the game okay so the ghost you know uh, after getting destroyed it appeared at some random location see so the location of the new ghost changed right just because of this code over here now why the ghost is not appearing again just because you know it is, is still moving but we are not able to see that ghost on this playground let me show it to you so if i will write down let's write down ghost one dot x see the value is constantly changing now what does this mean that the ghost one is moving constantly along x axis and if you will uh, write down ghost one dot y over here you will be able to see the changes happening in the value of y also of that ghost one why because ghost one still exists okay we are not able to see that ghost on this playground just because the width and it's of uh, it's uh, uh, a 400 by 400 playground on which we are working right now and as you can see the value of x is you know 7000 approximately and the value of y is now it has changed from 7000 to 8000 so that is the reason it is there it uh, you know it is living but we are not able to see it on this playground now how can we get rid of this thing how, once the ghost image cross this border, this playground's side i would like it to come back on its original position okay or else we what we can do we can you know uh, destroy it that's also uh, one of the things that we can make use of so 
वंस द गोस्ट विल क्रॉस दिस साइड और विल क्रॉस दिस एज और विल टच दिस एज आई वुड लाइक इट टू गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड ऑटोमेटिकली हाउ कैन वी डू दैट so the best way of doing that is to define a condition along with this condition over here in this if loop so let's uh, make use of or or operator okay so this is again logical operator right now if the ghost do ghost 1 dot uh, x will become smaller than 0 okay so this here the value of x is equal to 0 right so if it becomes or you can say if it becomes less than minus 5 so i would like that ghost image to get destroyed besides again we can place this or or operator over here and let's define one more condition if ghost 1 dot x is greater than so if it is coming like this and if the value of Goes dot y becomes greater than uh, uh, let's say four twenty. So I would like that ghost one to get destroyed automatically. Let's see whether we are going to get the right output with this code we have defined over here in this workspace or not. Okay, as you can see, now I am getting the correct output with this one, right? So this is how you can make it more interesting for the user to play. Okay, now let's do the same thing for Ghost Two as well. So what you have to do, you just have to copy this whole thing from here, and you can put it over here like this. Okay, and let's replace all these Ghost One with Ghost Two. Okay, and what else? Okay, we need to replace this one also with goes to. Let's run this game and check out the output. Okay, so that's how you can make it more interesting for the user to play. Right. Okay. Now you know the way they are coming. They are coming. You know, simply they are coming. Uh, in this way, diagonally they are. If you want to see them rotating like this, is it possible for us to do that? Thing? Let's check it out. So we are going to come on this sprite section of this toolbox and let's check out whether we have anything over here uh, with which we can make the ghost images rotate. So you know, as you can see over here, there are three blocks. Which are there present in this sprite section of the toolbox? You can make use of for rotating the sprites. Now this is the one which is uh, going to help us for rotating the sprites. So I'm going to put it over here and let's replace this ghost one sprite with ghost one, and I'm going to rotate it with uh, let's rotate it with this speed. Let's check out what are we going to get. Now you can see. That ghost one image is rotating, right? Okay. So if you want to decrease the speed, you just have to change it to uh, change the value. I'm changing it to twenty one. Let's see what is going to happen. Okay. And you know, initially we are not able to see it uh, coming rotating. Initially, it is not rotating. So what we can do, we can define the same code right on the top as well. Now you'll be able to see something like this, right? That's how we make it more interesting for the user. And besides that, let's define the same thing for this ghost two also. So this one is for ghost two. Okay, perfectly fine. And we need to add this code also for goes to this one. Let's copy it from here and put it over here. I'm copying it from this or operator. 
so you know what is this or operator doing if any of these three conditions which I have defined over here so this is the first condition this one is a second condition and this one is a third condition if any of these three will be true for uh, you know at any point of the game then this whole thing is going to get executed fine let's now run this game this is what you are going to get as an isn't it amazing right that's how you can make it more interactive hope you guys enjoyed this lecture a lot if you have any query uh, related to anything that i have uh, shared with you guys in this lecture you guys are most welcome to ask me the same Yes, is there any query, is there any issues, uh, is there anything which you were not able to understand? Okay, so uh, in case you come across any issue, uh, while making this thing which I have showed you today in this online class, you are most welcome to use, make use of the comment section. Okay, write down your issue over there and I will get back to you. Thank you very much for joining me in this lecture. Have a great day. Bye-bye.